Good evening, Internet, and welcome to Top Shift 130, and welcome to Al Kazar's Hope, one of my favorite bases in the um, entire Elite Dangerous universe. Um, we are playing Update 8. Uh, the Ada <laughs> adventures will have to wait because Update 8 has now arrived, and I'm pleased to say I'm quite happy with it, uh, and I'll show you why. Um, in addition to all the other features which I'll come across, uh, later. Um, you can see here that I am walking around the uh, the concourse in medium settings um, uh, on my which I've only been able to do in, in low settings before and on top of that the frame rate would absolutely tank on planetary bases it really would but here absolutely smooth and I'm getting a decent enough frame rate to, for this to be played. So I'm reasonably happy with the performance on this one. I mean, I'm getting a little bit of a hit, but that's probably because I'm running OBS in the background. But there, in all its glory, is um, my rope. Rope 5, to be exact. And walking around seems fine. So. I mean, I've been playing this for the last three or four days now since since release, and I have to say that the performance on this one has now gone from just barely acceptable to adequate. So I'm not having any trouble actually playing the game or having the game spoiled due to frame rate, which is great. Now there are other factors that the other things that they've put in for this release. For instance, um, the Alliance Crusader, Anaconda, Beluga, Federal Corvette, the Imperial Cutter, the Type 9 and the Type 10, they all now support a multi-crew of four. I haven't had a chance to actually ch test this one out yet, but it does look like it's just an extra seat. They don't, haven't done any other modifications to multi-crew, but an extra seat's an extra seat. Um, we've gotten four new engineers added to Colonia. Um, which, you know, as we're nowhere near Colonia, there's not really much point worrying about them. Uh, but they have added in <coughs> uh, walking around Wells-class megaships. Now, these could be the new megaships which have been uh, told to dock in... Uh, well, you can dock it on the way to Colonia. So, uh, we'll have to have a look around on those. They do seem a completely different layout to everything that's been before, so that's... that's um, something new to explore uh, and then we have the big one for as far as I'm concerned and that is the emotes now um, let's see we can salute we can point now that will actually highlight uh, where you've pointed and everybody will actually see where that is uh, can wave at people uh, one of the things that I've actually found quite funny is that if you, if you actually go to an NPC and you're friendly with them uh, around the settlements and you salute, they salute back. <laughs> I quite like that. So you've got salute, wave, applaud, disagree, agree, point, stop, and advance, go. So um, all of those uh, have, you know, context-sensitive uh, bits. So... And also, it might not seem like much, but when you are together with a group of people and you start emoting instead of just uh, bowing and things like that, then I, it does add something to the social experience. Um, now, in addition to these things, they've started to do um, what I really wanted them to do for, for them from the beginning. Um, it's pretty much agreed that Odyssey does feel separate to Elite Dangerous. It doesn't feel like it's integrated enough, but they've started adding in missions now, which will start bringing the in-cockpit experience and the uh, on-foot experience together, which I'm very happy about. Um, also, the, you now have uh, new mission, new delivery mission types, which means that you can meet people in person instead of just picking stuff up off of the ground. So, for instance, if we go to these transportation missions here, you'll see that you, you know, you, you've got your standard um, fetch synthetic, synthetic genome from a settlement, but um, we also have this. 
collect a secure package from Thomas Warner pardon my French um, so but that is five light seconds away so I think we will actually take that mission um, and you've got to bring a uh, package to so you these delivery messages um, are actually quite good because <laughs> you're effectively talking to other NPCs and delivering to other NPCs which I thought there was another five second one well obviously we've gone and lost him um, in addition to these uh, delivery missions there's also smuggling missions where obviously you take a package to a person or take a package from a person which is illegal that's pretty much smuggling um, but also when it comes to assassination missions um, the target can run they can run for a, sh for a ship themselves and also trying to escape in it so if you're going for one of these assassination missions then um, you're, you've got to basically have your own ship on standby in case they make a run for it because there's only one way you're going to stop them and that's with your uh, your own ship and finally um, say for instance you start doing raids that's going to annoy people you could have people in space come after you as a direct consequence of the missions that you're running on foot so it does feel like this is the beginning of a lot of integration between uh, Odyssey on foot and um, uh, Odyssey, uh, sort of Elite Dangerous in Space, if you like. Which, to tell you the truth, has been the one thing that I have wanted more than the actual performance. Um, it's nice to have the performance up, um, especially when you know you can now actually play the game without um, landing at a settlement, then waiting five seconds for the uh, for the frame rate to actually catch up. This is the first time I've actually flown my crate mark to in there. And you can actually see the difference here on medium from low in just the the texture quality of the of the of the surfaces, which I think is great. Wonderful view of uh, Merop there. So goodness knows what it's gonna be like if I ever get a graphics card which would be at a handle high settings. For those that are interested, this is uh, an i7 16 gig, uh, i7 3 770 16 gig, and a, a GeForce 1050 Ti, um, which is running this. Which the hardware is what three, four years out of, um, behind the curve at the moment. So, for a modern game, not too bad. Um, a lot of people are saying it's not as good as performance as Horizons because, well, the graphics engine has been obviously updated and it's more intensive. So, is this a, it is a little hard to justify that... There we go. The blockade mining exploration. So, that is... I think it'll be behind, behind this planet, so we'll just have to take off and land. Uh, sorry, take off and uh, orbit the planet, and then hopefully, hopefully, we'll be able to get round in time. Oh, it's the other side of the blooming gas giant. Oh, uh, that's gonna that's gonna take things a little while because the, ga the gravity of the gas giant is going to slow me down. Still. But that's not all that's been happening in the world of Elite Dangerous. Um, they've also gone and discussed what's coming up next in Update 9. Um, there was the uh, development update for October. Now, obviously, there's there's not as much uh, detail on this as we've had in the past, but still, 
Update 9, they have confirmed that that's when the new Twin Seat Combat SRV is coming. Uh, they showed a picture of it on uh, on the stream, or they showed a picture of the turret of it, actually. So, Update 9, probably expected sometime in November. Sometimes they do it for... They've always aimed for sort of like mid of the month, but they always seem to delay it because of, you know, bugs and issues. But as long as people get sort of like a monthly update, I think uh, I think they've got the, the progress right. Um, they're also doing further mission additions and improvements, which is, uh, which is you know, always wanted. Anything more to um, increase the integration between the on-foot and or the uh, in-space bit, always appreciated. Um, and we are getting mission content, uh, mission contacts at planetary points of interest. So that means that when, um, at the moment, when you scan a planet, you get the points of interest for that planet instead of these blue circles that used to have in Horizons. Uh, some of those are standard Horizons encounters, some of them are brand new uh, Odyssey encounters. It does look like they'll be putting these um, surface contacts, like the one that I'm just about to do now. Uh, at these points of interest, so the point of interest, the the NPC contact uh, mission or functionality, which again I'm going to be showing you in a minute, that will be um, something that will be built upon in future versions, which I think perfectly fine. Um, and then we also having settlement mission providers now. Um, at the moment. Uh, you only get the mission providers in the concourse at um, uh, at planetary bases and outposts and things like that. You know, the guys that say, I've got a mission for you, if you're willing to break the law, etc, etc. Um, these will now be added to some of these settlements, which is always a good thing, so places for more missions. Because you can actually get missions from the settlements, uh, from, the, uh, uh, from the bulletin boards there, if you wanted. Um, and finally, the, one of the other big things that people are interested in is the multi-limpid controller. This means that you'll be able to use more than one limpid type in your ship. Um, at the moment, I think, in my ship... Let's have a look. Uh, I've got repair limpids and decontamination limpids. They're two separate modules. Now, what I was thinking was maybe not they would get... Uh, merged into one limpet controller, but obviously would not be able to handle the same amount of limpets that uh, a specialised one would do. Oh, is this green? Excellent. So that's what's planned for update nine, and you know, as long as they're one of the things that they've said is that they're continuing to work on the performance this time with the character animations and things like that which I think is probably one of the missing links because there is still a performance hit when you land at a complicated base that's fully populated and that could be because the character the NPC character animations haven't been as well optimised as they should have been However, the big news about what's coming soon, or rather, <laughs> in a couple of months, is fleet carrier interiors. Now, just like the... Um, oh, hello. Uh, is this, this person? Docking request denied. It's denied because there's already a ship there. I mean, I could just land outside. You see the other ship coming in. I think I'll just land anyway. Oh, there he is, Cobra Mark III being a pain. Actually, is that big enough? I don't know. There's a small little uh, outpost, I'll say that. Yeah, and after update nine, the next big uh, feature that they're they're highlighting is fleet carriers and fleet carrier interiors. So these are your personal fleet carriers that um, 
that a, a lot of players have. They cost five billion credits to put together, so I mean, I'm quite a way off that, but it takes a commitment to have one of them. But you're not, not only going to be able to walk around your fleet carrier, you'll be able to sit on the bridge and uh, watch it jump, which is one of the uh, most complained things about a fleet carrier is the fact you can't watch it jump. Right, okay, so, um, let's see, if can, can I, it says unsuitable terrain. There we go. Let's just disembark. I'm just walking around here in my uh, Artemis suit, which is the exploration suit. Um, apparently, a lot of the Horizons um, clothes that you could buy from your characters didn't match up before, but they do match up now. That was one of the big uh, graphical updates they did. I mean, I must admit, that does look quite impressive with the Cobra Mark III sat there. And that is my Crate Mark II. I haven't actually flown my Crate Mark II in um, in Odyssey yet, so there's a big Thargoid invasion going on, so I'm going to see if I can uh, take out a couple of bugs later on. That's uh, Thargoids, not... Oh, now you disappear. Well, bye then. Right. So I've now got to find this person, Thomas Warren and we've got to... Um, get a package from him. So the best thing we can do from here is try and find a terminal. Um, oh, there's one over here, apparently. Find a terminal. Da, 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 da. Here we go. Uh, staff list. I'm somewhere around here. There we are. Is the level two person of uh, Thomas? Let's go find Thomas, and hopefully he's not anywhere um, inaccessible. Oh, oh, there he is! Uh -oh. Right here. Right here. Hello, Commander. I've been waiting for you, and being honest, I've wasted time in better settlements than this one. All wrapped up nicely for you. Don't drop it. Thank you. So, I know how that. And that should be a simple job of heading straight back to... Uh, so, right, I've secured the package. Let's see whether or not I can... Oh, we've got some security people here. Stay there, Commander. want to make sure you're behaving yourself. I am behaving myself. Okay, nothing's come up. Go on. Thank you, Commander. Oi! I was being saluted. Oh. Not saluting me back. Move! I am moving. Reporting in. I'll try again. Oh, it didn't see me. Typical. Right, anyway. So I just get this back to Alzar Hope, and hey presto, that should be a completed mission. And all the time here, I haven't had the performance drops or any of the issues that has plagued uh, the game before. So it does beg the question, is um, Elite Dangerous Odyssey good enough for people to come back to? Um, I would say yes, but I mean it's certainly on my my system, which is I think well below what people were expecting as a minimum requirement. Well, well below the recommended requirements. That's one problem that Frontier haven't done. They haven't actually issued um, what the recommended requirements is for. Really dangerous, and people have just made the assumption, assumption that if it works in Horizons, we'll be able to run Odyssey at the same settings. I mean, it's obvious that that doesn't work. 
but I think the performance is now good enough in order for, you know, meaningful meaningful gameplay to be taking place. Um, the downside is that, and th this is it's very subjective, is that it doesn't seem to be a consistent upgrade. Uh, Frontier have acknowledged this, that they've got it working well on a lot of systems, but there seems to be some people's uh, PC setups which don't work, even though they should give you blinding performance. I mean, this is running in 1080p, so uh, I'm not having to worry about 4K and all that kind of uh, graphical fidelity. Um, but, yeah, when I, in my, uh, when my 1050, it's getting better performance than a 3060, uh, then, you know, something, something's not right in some part of the game. So, um, <sighs> the problem is, is that you've got no way of actually testing to see whether or not the game is working on your setup properly. Um, you either buy the upgrade, which is a, a still full price, I think £35 at the moment, or you, um, <laughs> if you've, you know, you've got to buy the upgrade to find out whether or not it works, but I think due to Steam, um, it doesn't count as a proper release, so you don't get the two-hour buyback, if you see what I mean. Which, that is a bit of a problem. Because you could actually buy the game, find out it doesn't work too, too well on your particular settings, but you can get a refund because basically it's, an up, it's a DLC and not a full game. <sighs> but, back to Alcazar's Hope. So, in conclusion, is Update 8 the Jesus patch that uh, a lot of people have been seeing on the forums? Um, it's close, I would say. As far as I'm concerned, it, uh, the game is now completely playable in all sectors. Um, I think the only time I'm getting slowed down is in a planetary settlement where there is a heck of a lot of NPCs running around. But as far as conflict zones, par, um, you know, flying spaceships, everything else seems to be above 30 frames a second, which for, for myself is adequately uh, adequate enough for me to play. Obviously for those uh, people that play in VR, I mean this setup that I've got was baseline VR for Know, minimum requirements for VR and Horizons, so the performance that I'm getting in VR and this is not good enough. That will have to wait for a computer for uh, the computer to be upgraded. Uh, but as far as flat screen version is concerned, absolutely fine. Um, I'm able to play it, and uh, yeah. So as we approach. Uh, Alcazar's hope. Uh, I'm going to sign out and uh, wish everybody a oh uh, yes, I'm going to sign out and uh, thanks for everybody to uh, for for watching this. And if you'd like to just put a like and subscribe, it does help the channel a little. Uh, and of course, I will be uh, performing. <laughs> at Lave Radio, as usual, every Tuesday, and uh, there's also the Colin for Colonia stream, which happens every Sunday night, as I try and get this Imperial Clipper, which is now on the floor, it should now lands properly, um, to Colonia, very, very slowly. So, thank you, and uh, good night.